Hello, I'm Dr. Nina Abraham with the Michael E. DeBakey VA Medical Center, Baylor College of Medicine. And I'm a member of the American Society for Gastrointestinal Endoscopy. The ASGE represents nearly 11,000 members who are expertly trained in endoscopic procedures like upper endoscopy. Upper endoscopy allows the doctor to look at the lining of the upper part of the gastrointestinal tract, or GI tract. That includes the esophagus, stomach, and duodenum, which is the first portion of the small intestine. During an upper endoscopy, the doctor uses an endoscope. An endoscope is a thin, flexible tube with a small camera and a light on the end that allows the doctor to see inside the gastrointestinal tract. Pictures are transferred from the endoscope to a TV screen that your doctor watches to find abnormalities. This procedure is referred to as upper GI endoscopy, or EGD, which stands for esophago-gastroduodenoscopy. Upper endoscopy provides a safe, effective, minimally evasive way to see inside the upper GI tract. Upper endoscopy has been used for decades. New innovations in technology have allowed upper endoscopy to do more than just look at the GI tract. Endoscopy can also be used to treat conditions that in the past would have required surgery. Millions of endoscopies are done in the U.S. each year. New endoscopic technologies allow it to be used not only for seeing inside the upper GI tract, but for use in diagnosing and treating conditions of the liver and pancreas with advanced equipment. There are many conditions that upper endoscopy is used to look at and treat, including symptoms of ongoing upper abdominal pain, vomiting and difficulty swallowing, Examination of heartburn or gastroesophageal reflux disease, also known as GERD, which affects approximately 30 million people in the United States. Barrett's esophagus, a potentially premalignant or precancerous condition that can lead to esophageal cancer. Endoscopy is currently the best test for finding and treating many of the conditions that cause bleeding from the upper GI tract and is also more accurate than x-rays for identifying inflammation, ulcers, and tumors of the esophagus, stomach, or duodenum. In the following video presented by the ASGE, you will learn what to expect before, during, and after an upper endoscopy. I had been having heartburn issues and upper abdominal pain for about three weeks. Went to my primary care physician and she advised after trying some over-the-counter remedies if it didn't you know improve to come here and uh, I had appointment with him and he suggested trying some prescription medication and if that didn't you know improve anything then we would try the procedure. There is very little preparation required before an upper endoscopy. Before your exam, a member of the medical staff will give you instructions about the diet to follow the day of the procedure. Generally, patients cannot have solid food on the day of their procedure, but can have clear liquids up to two to four hours before the procedure. You can do your regular activities the day before the exam and eat your regular diet. Strictly follow your doctor's preparation instructions. This is so they can clearly see the upper GI tract to find any abnormalities and to avoid having the procedure canceled. Your doctor will also need to know what medications you are taking before your endoscopic procedure. You may be asked to stop some of those medications in advance of the exam. Before the procedure, the medical staff will provide you with an informed consent document to sign. This document discusses the risks, benefits, and alternatives of the procedure. The majority of upper endoscopies are performed with sedation, which involves getting medication through the vein to make you sleepy. This is so you are made comfortable during the exam. Upper endoscopy is a well-tolerated procedure. Though you may feel some sensations during the procedure, most patients are not even aware that the exam has occurred when they wake up after it is done. Be sure to make arrangements in advance to take a day off from work and for someone to take you home after the exam as you will not be allowed to drive and may need assistance if taking public transportation if you've been sedated for the procedure. 
Also, it is not safe or advisable to go back to work the same day after the procedure if you have received sedation. Don't hesitate to ask questions of the medical team providing your upper endoscopy. ASGE provides a list of questions to ask your endoscopist before the procedure. These are available at www.asge.org. Upper endoscopy is performed in a procedure room equipped with an endoscope and TV screen that shows your doctor the images from inside the upper GI tract. Before the exam, you will have a needle placed into a vein in your arm in order to give you the sedation to make you sleepy, as well as other medications you might need. This will keep you comfortable throughout the procedure. Again, many patients may fall asleep completely and may not remember anything about the exam. Well, the, the procedure is very straightforward. The patient will be brought into a room and they'll be placed on their left side. Um, they'll receive some intravenous sedation uh, to make them nice and comfortable and sleepy. Um, while they're napping, we'll use a very thin, flexible uh, scope that causes no injury. It's actually smaller than food that they eat. We pass the scope down, take a look around uh, at their upper digestive system, and try to find the reason for the symptoms that brought them there in the first place. Um, the test itself is, is fairly quick. It's certainly less than an hour in the majority of cases. Um, sometimes if we have to do some more elaborate things, and it may add a little bit to the time of the case, but the patient's kept comfortable throughout. Well, there's a number of things that you can find in the upper digestive tract. We're, we're first and foremost looking for the reason that they had their symptoms. Um, we find things like uh, uh, malignancies or cancers. We can find inflammation in the lining of the stomach. We can find and treat ulcers. Um, people who have uh, food intolerances, such as celiac sprue, we can uh, look for that and take biopsies to that end. Um, we look for uh, changes in the esophagus from reflux. Um, we look for pre-malignant or precancerous conditions, such as Barrett's esophagus. Um, so there's a wide variety of things that, that we can accomplish. Just before the procedure, your doctor may spray your throat with a numbing agent to assist in passing the endoscope, a thin, flexible tube, into your stomach. Upper endoscopy typically lasts less than one hour. Unexpected events are rare, but do occur. Complications of endoscopy may include making a tear in the lining of the gastrointestinal tract, bleeding, breathing problems, or a bad reaction to the medication used for sedation. Your doctor may also use upper endoscopy to take small tissue samples called a biopsy. A tissue biopsy can help your doctor identify whether the tissue is cancer or not. Biopsies are taken for many reasons, and a doctor might order a biopsy even if cancer is not suspected in order to diagnose certain conditions such as celiac disease or helicobacter pylori infection. That's probably pretty much how I imagined it. I actually expected it to take a little bit longer. It was much faster than I expected, which was good. <laughs> After your procedure, you will be closely watched for about 30 to 60 minutes. You'll be offered something to drink before leaving the doctor's office because the medical staff will want to know that you are able to tolerate liquids. The medical staff will also speak with you and go over the results of the test, when to resume your normal medications and diet, as well as a follow-up plan. Before leaving your endoscopy appointment, you will know at least the preliminary results of your exam. It's quite common to have tissue samples taken during the test. This does not necessarily mean that anything is wrong. Any tissue removed will be sent to a doctor called a pathologist. This doctor will look at the tissue under a microscope. These results will not be ready right away and generally take several days to be completed. Before leaving the doctor's office, a member of the endoscopy team will suggest how best to check on those results. You will also receive instructions for what to do once you arrive back safely at home. Because of the effect of the sedatives, you will be asked not to drive or go back to work and not to participate in any physical activities you can return to normal activities the next day. 
Occasionally, patients have a sore throat after the exam, which usually goes away within a few hours. Although complications are rare, you will be given a number to contact your doctor if you have any chest or abdominal pain, bleeding, vomiting, fever, or if you have any other questions or problems related to the procedure. Upper endoscopy is a safe, effective, and well-tolerated procedure that can potentially save your life. If you have any questions or concerns, ask your doctor. For more information about endoscopy and to find a qualified doctor in your area, log on to www.asge.org. Also at the ASG website, you can make a donation in your physician's name to advance endoscopic research and public education.